G'day you cheeky dogs, my name's Margie and I'm an Australian currently living in America. And today's video is going to be a breakdown of season one episode Fruit Bat and a bit of a discussion about like the lucid dreaming sequences that's been going on and how Bluey can kind of like go into other people's dreams, but we'll get into that later. If you're new to my channel, I like to do Bluey content and eventually also other stuff like animated content in Australia versus America stuff. But this month, June is a month for Bluey because season three B is coming out. So we've got a lot of stuff here us. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below as well as that bell for notifications so that you know when each of these videos is coming out. With that being said, let's just go straight into it with our synopsis first. Fruit Bat. Not wanting to go to bed, Bluey tries to dream about being a nocturnal fruit bat so she can stay up all night long and soon finds herself flying through the night sky. So the one thing I want to mention about this before even that first scene pops up is that the fruit bat book appears later on in season one in the quiet game in the background in a bookstore. I made a theory about this as to the fact that maybe Bluey and her family are kind of like the Kardashians of the Blueyverse and they're actually in a reality show and that's why her book is in the store. But it's a pretty funny Easter egg that happens later on and there's quite a few little sort of future Easter egg references in this episode. But our very first image that we see is of the game they call Pop-Up Croc and this is based off the very popular 90s game in Australia called Pop-Up pirate but instead of a pirate we have a little dog that looks a lot like crocodile dundee and in that movie he's in like a tinny which is what this boat looks like sort of a gray tin boat with the exact same motto as what we see in the movie as well and the number five four zero five five this number has given me such a headache because i cannot figure out what it is actually supposed to mean. So there are three possible theories as to what this number is. The first one is that this is the tinny registration number that maybe it appears in the movie. I couldn't manage to find a screenshot of it anywhere. So that is a possibility. The second one is that this is the amount of votes that the Crocodile Dundee movie has gotten on IMDb to be the greatest movie of all time. So, I mean, maybe, but that one I feel like is maybe a little less dodgy because that number can obviously change a lot, but there's a screenshot of it, so that could be it. And then the third option is that this is to do with Rod Ansell, who is the actual character that Crocodile Dundee is based off. He was born in 19... 54 and he actually survived out in the middle of the outback without basically anything for 56 days so it's so close if it was 55 days like oh that would fit perfectly born 54 out in the outback for 55 days crocodile dundee it kind of all fits but it's one day off so maybe maybe it's that who knows the only way i can find out for sure is if i get an interview with one of the animators from ludo studios only way to do that is if they see that I have a lot of subscribers. So if you want to find out all these things, hit that subscribe button down below. Don't forget. So we then move out into the backyard. We see all of these fruit bats flying by. We get our intro sequence, which I love has like the pawpaw as well as the footy in the background too. I'll get a bit more into those in a second. We see them saying goodnight to all the animals together. They're saying goodnight frogs, goodnight kangaroos and bilbies very Australian animals, and then goodnight fruit bats. And Bingo, the little knowledge star that she is, knows that they're nocturnal, but she says octurnal. It's a really cute reference again to her being, you know, little and sometimes kids mispronounce words. And then we see Bandit kicking his footy off into the distance. So something really cool about the footy here is that it is a rugby ball. We use it for touch football and rugby, but the colors on it, the green and gold and the white are the specific colors for touch football Australia. Green and yellow or green and gold are also the Australian colors as well. And then we see that Bluey, yeah, she wishes she was a fruit bat. The first of many, many times that she says this. And then we get introduced to a whole new game called Rocket Ship. Now in the background here, we can see a tennis ball Easter egg up on the wall there in the picture frame. They do the really cute sequence of them like being clicked in, taken up the stairs, and then we go outside the bathroom and we see Bandit call Bluey a grub. A grub is a very Aussie slang term for someone who is not clean, basically. We use it all the time. You'll see Bandit uses it multiple times in this episode as well. And then we get introduced to our next game, Penguins, which is censored in the UK version of this episode, as well as the second edition book in the UK. This scene of Bluey pretending to be a penguin sliding along the tiles has been completely removed. And the idea for it is basically that they don't want kids doing this in the UK, but apparently it's fine in America and Australia. So 
you know, BBC over there doing their own censoring, just like Disney Plus does. For those of you from the UK who haven't seen it, this is the scene of Bluey sliding along the bathroom. In the background as well, we see Bingo taking a shower with an umbrella, which I think is really funny. And she's got the little ladybugs on it too. We've seen ladybugs pop up all the time throughout Bluey. It's even in the Bluey toys as well. You can get the ladybug stickers. And of course, we know Bingo loves bugs. So in the UK version, it actually just completely cuts and goes straight to Bingo doing her tactical wee, which of course, apparently seeing a dog do a wee is perfectly fine. But I do love it. We hear a lot about tactical wees and bush wees from Bingo. So this is great. The book she's reading as well is a bit of a hint towards the future episode Sleepy Time as well. And then we see Bluey brushing her teeth with her Chunky Chimp toothbrush, which again, a reference to her favorite character in movie Chunky Chimp. Also Bandit tells her that bats, fruit bats, they pee on themselves because they're upside down. That's not actually true. They actually turn themselves around before they pee. So. Fun little extra fact there about fruit bats. They don't pee on themselves. Bandit calling her a little grub again, and then them moving into the bedroom to play their next game. But before that, we can see the book. It is a little picture book of Jack and the Beanstalk. We hear a bit about the book in a little bit, but I think it's really cute that they sort of show us these storybooks, but with dogs. So we then get to see the story game. It's really funny. Bandit pretends to tell them the story, falls asleep, wakes up yelling spider. And then we get another scene of the outside with the moon and fruit bats again. Again, flying out towards the moon and poor Bluey she can't sleep and this has actually come up a few times in reddit threads the idea that maybe Bluey has ADD or ADHD or there's a reason why she seems to struggle with sleep all the time personally I just think it's her being a kid kids are like this all the time I'm going through it with my own child at the moment where he just struggles to fall asleep at night so I think it's just a kid thing I don't think it's too in depth really. I do have a love when they pan across to see bingo and in typical toddler fashion she's just sprawled out Blankets already off and she is fast asleep. When we go downstairs, we actually see our first animation error here. You'll see that Chili is taping up her hockey stick. Again, green and yellow, Australian colors. But the tape that she's taped up disappears literally in the next frame, it's already gone. Just a small animation error there. So we can also hear Bandit on the ground. He's sort of like whimpering and like kind of running in his sleep, sort of like how dogs do in their sleep. But we find out that he's dreaming about playing touch football with his mates. Touch football is actually one of the most popular social sports in Australia. It's kind of based on rugby league, but just non-contact. So a lot of guys and girls, we play it all through school, like elementary school, middle school, high school. So I love that they again reference this, that maybe it's his favorite sport. So we hear him score a try in his sleep, he whimpers, and Bluey sort of finds out that yeah, her dad has had to give up a lot of things that he really loves because he's busy being a dad. So Bluey, upon seeing her dad dreaming particularly about a sport that he loves, she gets the idea about maybe she can dream about being a fruit bat. Her mom tells her to give it a try. She goes back up to her room and tries real hard. And we hear this clock ticking in the background. And then as soon as it stops, we know that Bluey has started dreaming. And we get confirmation of this as she comes down the stairs and all of a sudden the pop-up croc is humongous. It takes up the whole room. Her mom's there trying to play the game by herself. And then we see her going outside and then taking off right as the music starts. A note about this music, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's got massive like David Bowie type vibes or Beatle type vibes to it. Kudos again to the music team at Ludo Studios. It is fantastic. Also in the background with the stars, it kind of looks a little bit like the Big Dipper. So I love when there's sort of constellation Easter eggs as well. So we see Bluey flying with the fruit bats. She flies over a street with some houses on it. Now this has got to be outside of inner city Brisbane because there's no way anyone has yards that big inside of Brisbane. There's there's also some like sort of different things you can see. So the first house is a typical Queenslander. There's a water tank as well out the back, which means that maybe it's in a more rural area. But then right next to it is a more modern house with a pool. So who knows what this could be. But there's also like a little lake there and you can see a little tinny as well. So kind of like the tinny that we saw the Crocodile Dundee character in. And then we see Bluey flying past Mackenzie's room. This is also Mackenzie's first introduction into the series. And I think the reason why Bluey flies past his room in particular is because Bluey has a crush on Mackenzie. We see this a lot more in the episode Barky Boats. And of course, if she's purposely dreaming, then yeah, she's gonna dream about the person that she likes as well. So I think it's a little bit of a wink towards that. But inside Mackenzie's room, we can see that he loves space. He's got stars on the wall and he's got planets on his bed sheets. Again, this could be a hint towards the season three episode space that he is in. And we can also see some little dinosaurs around his room and this big 
fat green rabbit, I think. I'm not sure what this is an Easter egg for. So if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments down below. We then see Bluey flying into a backyard there where she starts to eat mangoes, which are super popular in Queensland. A lot of mango trees are everywhere. I grew up with mango trees in my backyard. She then goes through and eats pawpaw, which is also called papaya in other countries. She's then eating bananas. Again, really popular in Queensland. We have a lot of banana farms everywhere. And then the last fruit that she's eating is pink guava. She then hears someone calling out her dad's name and she flies over and sees a rugby field where there are six people playing here. We only find out who five of these people are. We don't know who the sixth player is. So as we zoom in, we can see that it is Bandit, Lucky's dad, Pat and Mackenzie's dad who are playing. And then as we see them playing alone, we also see Rocco and Stripe as well. Any guesses as to who that sixth player is? Comment down below. I'm thinking maybe Chloe's dad, but I don't know if he's really much of a sort of touch football player. Something else as well about this scene is the fact that Bluey and her dad have an interaction. He gets a try, he's really excited, they chat about how good it was. But also we know that Bluey calls her dad dad and that she doesn't always remember that his name is Bandit. She has to ask him what his name is in the episode of the show, which leads to the fact that we think that Bluey can enter other people's dreams. So in this one, she has entered her dad's dream. Just like when Bingo has a dream in sleepy time, she enters that one as well when they're running along their dad. So maybe Bluey is magic. I mean, we've seen fairies exist in this world. So perhaps this is a magical power that Bluey has. Now a couple little Aussieisms here is of course Bandit saying like, yes mate, yes mate, yes mate. Mate, very Aussie word. Also, I think it's uh, Pat who's also like, oh righto. We like to add O's onto the end of a lot of our words in Australia, so Rido is one of those. And then we see the beautiful transition of Bluey going up into the sky and back into her bed. And then we see the kitchen, we can hear some like Aussie birds in the background there, and then there's a cup and I'm pretty sure, I want to say it kind of maybe represents the Sydney Harbour Bridge possibly as like a little Easter egg. And then we get the kind of joke from my mum about, oh what a big sleep in, seven o'clock, which yes to parents. Seven o'clock is actually a pretty big sleep in. I know for myself, my children wake up at 5 a.m. So I wish I would get a seven o'clock sleep in. We then see the really cute sort of reference of like her dad doing like chest presses, holding Bluey, which I don't know, my husband does that with our kids as well. So I really like that kind of little add in. And then Bluey saying, you know, thank you for looking after us. Like she realizes the sacrifices that her dad has had to make just so he can take care of them as kids. And I love that that sort of like, she has that understanding. It's really beautiful. And he says, you're welcome. And then we find out Bluey's favorite food is fruit salad, but she certainly doesn't want that. She just wants toast, possibly with Vegemite on it. So that's my breakdown of the episode Fruit Bat. For me, I would probably give this, I don't know, I'm gonna give this like four out of five long dogs if I'm able to give that, that rating. I love the music. I think it's absolutely magical. I love all the references in it. The only thing that's missing for me is the long dog. So if you found a long dog, let me know. But I think it's just a really gorgeous episode. I know for myself, when I hum the music, my son straight away yells out Fruit Bat. It's that iconic to us as a family already. But let me know, what would you give this show a rating out of five long dogs? And don't forget, again, hit that like button if you love Bluey as much as I love Bluey. I'm super excited. We are gonna be doing breakdowns every day of Bluey season 3B, starting this Sunday slash Monday as well. If you don't live in Australia like me, but you want to watch season three, I made a whole video about how you can watch Bluey season three worldwide. I go through it step by step as to how to use a Nord VPN to watch Bluey online for free. Uh, note this video is not sponsored and I am an affiliate though with Nord VPN. It's what I use so that I can watch season three and make all these videos about it. So I go through how to set up your Nord account as well as how to set up that it's in Australia. So then your internet thinks that you are in Australia as well. And then we go over to the ABC iView website for Australia where Bluey season three is aired, how to set up your account on that as well. And then where to go on the website so that you can access Bluey season three. And you can also access season one and season two, including the episodes Dad Baby, as well as teasing, which you can't always find on Disney, depending on what country that you live in. But until then, I have picked out some other videos that you might like, and I will see you in another video. Mwah. Bye.